So we calculated that the curl of E, according to Faraday's law, is the change in the magnetic field over time. And this looks an awfully lot like this rule that we found earlier. That the curl of the B vector was equal to the, the uh, current flowing at any particular point in space. Um, if we go run with the case where there's uh, no net electric charge anywhere, there's, so we don't have any divergence of E. So if we say divergence of E equals zero by choice, then we know that the divergence of B is always equal to zero because nobody knows where the monopoles are. Um, and so now we can draw some parallels, some very fascinating parallels. This changing magnetic field behaves to the electric field just like a current does to the uh, magnetic field. And so we have the Biot Savoir law, mu naught over 4 pi integral of the current cross the difference between whatever we're integrating and the current position that we're going to calculate for over that distance times the volume differential. And so we can just translate this over here and say the E vector is equal to, um, well, the mu naught is part of the J, so we don't have that. We have 1 over 4 pi. Oh, we need a minus sign. Integral of, well, it's not J, it's, it's the time derivative of B cross r hat over r squared d tau. Okay. And um, we can actually pull this this uh, time dependency thing out. So we have one, uh, uh, well, d by dt of negative 1 over 4 pi integral of v vector cross r hat over r squared d tau. Okay. So that's an interesting parallel. Um, well, b, b cross r, this is, um, this should appear actually familiar to you as um, the A vector, right? The magnetic vector potential. So this becomes, um, I'm sorry, this is partials, minus d by dt of the A vector. And a uh, quick you know, check, the curl of A should give you back um, B. So the time derivative of the, curl of, the A, of the curl of A should give you back the, um, the time derivative of B, and indeed, um, everything works out, and the curl of E ends up being back to what this was. Okay, um, so uh, if we're using symmetry, we can use um, Ampere's law. So that's the loop integral. Take the B along that loop, and then you can just find the current enclosed that goes through that loop using whatever surface you want to, times mu naught, and that gives you that. Well, over here, the parallel is, I should have written these go around some loop with the E vector. Remember, we don't have any charge anywhere by choice. And that is just going to be equal to negative d phi by the total magnetic flux, the change in the total magnetic flux. OK, so the total flux behaves like the total current within some loop. OK, very interesting parallels. Um, again, this only works if the divergence of the electric field is 0. That's we just if we if we're working in a space where there's no free charge, there's no uh, net charge anywhere. Um, everything's like currents and stuff like that. Then we get to play with these and get these results. Uh, do a couple more examples, um, and then uh, another note, and then a couple more examples, and then we'll be done with this section. So thanks for your time.